You welcome back. It's time now for AM Biz. And over the past decade, Ghana's aviation sector has grown by about 8% every year. In 2017, the total international passengers through both arrivals and departure of Kotoka International Airport was about 1.8 million. But experts are saying that Ghana could rake in a lot more revenue if it had a national airline. So, how much cash is the country actually losing as a result of not having a state-owned airline? Sandra Isinamapenu takes a look at some African countries whose economic successes have been largely attributed to their vibrant aviation industries. In Africa, air transport supports 6.8 million jobs and $72.5 billion of the continent's GDP annually. Statistics have indicated that airline businesses in Africa is growing as more countries are pushing to have their own national air carriers. As at the end of 2017, the European Aeronautic Defence and Space Company Airbus received 261 orders from African countries for their own aircrafts, with 28 new operators adding up to the existing number. And as the world's second largest in terms of population, experts say air transport in Africa will massively increase from 1.2 billion in 2006 to 1.68 billion by 2030. Experts say tourism in Africa will massively increase in the next 15 years from 52 million in 2012 to 134 million in 2030 and expected to multiply by 10 in 40 years, hence the need for African countries to pay attention to the aviation industry. Already, some African countries are making huge gains from having national airlines. A typical example is the exportation of rose flowers in East Africa. In 2014, Zambia made $14 million from rose exportation. Ethiopia exported over $154 million in 2014, while Kenya's went up to the tune of $326 million same year. These three countries provided more jobs than the mining industry, translating into $200 $125 million in 2016 to $820 million in 2017. Several other African countries, including Ethiopia, Zambia, Togo, Seychelles, Mauritius, and Cote d'Ivoire, benefiting greatly from the aviation industries. Tourist arrival per year in Togo, for instance, is said to have more than tripled from 50,000 in 1995 to 350,000 in 2015 since the creation of Togo National Airline. Just five years after the creation of Air Côte d'Ivoire, tourist arrival also doubled from 800,000 in 1990 to 220 million in 2017 direct impact of tourism on Mauritius' economy as a result of having a national airline was 45,500, representing 8.2% of total employment, with a total of 135,000 jobs created same year. The story of Seychelles is not different. With just a population of 95,235, 22.0% of Seychelles' GDP is generated from the tourism industry industry. This is because the country has invested in having a national airline which has translated into jobs employing a total of 29,000 in the hospitality industry. Another shining example in Africa is Air Namibia. Between 2015 and 2016, Air Namibia reported a total of $3.5 million in profits from its operations and paid $21 million in wages and salaries. The airline also made $55 million in direct GDP contribution as a result of supply chain activities linked in the airline's procurement. After the collapse of the national airline in 2010, Ghana has been without a national career. Free boarding passes, mismanagement and government interference with operations were among several other factors said to have led to the collapse of the hitherto vibrant Ghana Airways. 
After several postponements of the launch of a new national airline, many say it's about time Ghana sees the aviation sector as key to its economic growth. The way forward would be for governments to really understand and appreciate that aviation is an economic enabler and that if you want to generate a little money from aviation, it, you, will, you will be doing so at the expense of bigger bucks coming into the country. Because for every tourist that comes into the country, the tourist will take a taxi, the tourist will stay in a hotel, the tourist will eat in a restaurant, he will probably shop, and he will probably go to other places of attraction. All of these places will pay taxes. So you're going to get more money if more tourists are coming into the country. Government has given approval for the establishment of a home-based airline with private sector participation to provide regional and intercontinental services for efficient movement of people, goods, services, as well as to promote tourism. Strategic investors will be engaged and the airline is expected to commence operations in 2019. So far, two deadlines for the relaunch of what is now to be called the home base carrier has not been met. First was in 2015 and then 2016. Then notwithstanding, the current government says it is committed to reviving the national airline. The Ghana Civil Aviation Authority has said a new national airline expected to commence by 2019 would not tolerate free ticket regime, which was heavily exploited by government officials, leading to the demise of the Ghana Airways and its successor, the Ghana International Airlines. With the current policy approval by Parliament for the establishment of a new home base career by the Aviation Ministry and the Ghana Airports Company Limited. There are reports that a host of airlines, including Ethiopia Airline, Air Mauritius, and African World Airline, are currently in talks with governments for the establishment of the national airline. We changed our policy on the way we wanted to um, set it up. I mean, we uh, actually increased the scope of our initial operation from just domestic and regional to international first year. So that meant that we needed to get back to the table, speak to our original investors, and then widen the scope for more people to come in. That's why we held our stakeholders um, conference at uh, Ibis, and it was very successful. Um, so far, we've had more than 11 people or companies expressing interest to partner government to set up the home-based career. And we are putting final touches to the discussions that we held uh, for the stakeholders conference. And we know that um, anytime we say we are ready, some of our partners say they are also ready. So um, we are in good hands. We believe that uh, next year, uh, maximum second quarter, uh, we should see Ghanaian airplanes flying. Speaking to Joy Business in Toulouse, France, former Chief Executive Officer of Ethiopian Airline, Jim Awake, said Ghana would have to take a cue from Ethiopia in its quest to relaunch the home base carrier. He added that Ethiopian Air has been a success story in Africa because its management was devoid of government interference. For me, it doesn't matter who owns an airline. Ethiopian Airlines is 100% government, but the government allows Ethiopian Airlines to be run on commercial basis, complete independence to run the airline. If they were to do what many African carriers do, interfere in everything, Ethiopian Airlines will not be what it is today. African countries should, should be able to say, okay, here is our airline, here is the seed money, we'll create the airline, we'll put proper management in place, and you, you do your job. And I'm sure this can be done. Many, many, many European carriers, until, until uh, 20 years ago, were all government owned. They gradually came to, to, to the public thing. In Africa, we are not ready yet for a complete public for a, for a complete private airline. We need the government involvement in an airline. Is it to create an airline and allow it the freedom to run as a business, not as a political tool, but as a business.
if the government can let that political interference go, I think the airlines will succeed. Vice President of the Africa International Air Transport Association, Rafael Kuchi, is however not in favor of government's stake in national airlines. Now, what we, we tend to, uh, we, we would want to see is that governments limit the extent of involvement in aviation. We're not saying government should be hands off. After all, government is the one that has to create the policy environment, that has to create the regulations. Okay, so we need government, but we need government not for the operations of the airline, but for the regulatory and policy aspects of, of the, the industry. If we do that and we have governments doing um, their bit and allow private sector to drive the business, we are going to see success. And I, what I would want to see in Ghana is if government thinks it needs to have a stake in the state-owned career or national career that they want to establish, it should be a minimum stake and not a controlling stick, and allow the private sector to drive it. With an estimated 385 million people in West Africa as of 2017, there are numerous potentials for the aviation sector. Over the past decades, Ghana's aviation sector has grown by about 8% annually. In 2017, total international passengers through both arrival and departure of the Kotoka International Airport was 1.8 million mostly from Europe, North America and Asia. The aviation industry and tourism actually are related, they actually work together and a lot of countries are cashing in on the aviation industry to bring a lot of potentials into the tourism industry. But Ghana has not really done that. Talk of countries in Africa like Ethiopia, they've been able to take care of their national airline to rake in a lot of revenue for their nation. So as an emerging economy and a country that has really not done work when it comes to the aviation sector, what can we do differently? How do we take aviation seriously to be able to better the lots of the tourism industry? So aircrafts like this can actually attract a lot of tourists into one's country. And it's the hope of a lot of Ghanaians that as we think of reviving the national airline, facilities like this that is being provided by the Airbus can actually be factored into the national airline agenda. From Toulouse here in France, and this is the home of the Airbus assembling plan. My name is Sandra Isenamapenu, reporting for Joy Business.